What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. I actually got a hold of, you know that game Pillars of Eternity from back in the day? Well, a new CRPG is out from Paradox and all of those fine folks called Tyranny, where evil has won and now you've got to decide in a destroyed hellscape whether or not you want to be a good guy or a bad guy. Whether you want to add to the problem or whether you want to detract from it. Uh, to keep in mind, this will probably not be like a huge like 40 episode series or anything like that. We got a lot of stuff going on on the channel right now. It's a little crowded, but I really liked Pillars of Eternity. I've played it like twice or three times now. Every single time I play a different class and I enjoy it a little bit more. Uh, this time around, we're going to do like the first couple hours of the game. I just want to help you guys figure out if this is a game that you wanted to play for yourself when it releases. And I would feel lame if it didn't end up on the channel, at least in some regard, for some short amount of time. So... Without further ado, let's play some Tyranny. I feel like I've got my disclaimer in there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's check this on out, yeah? So, new game settings. The normal difficulty requires strategy efficiency, but you can be forgiven mistakes. You know what? I'm not trying to give myself stress right now. I'm not trying to give myself stress. Let's just play on normal. I feel like most people are going to play on normal anyway, so the series will be representative for them and they can see what they're going to be up against along the way. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Graven Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fatebinders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fatebinders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? That's a bad plan from the beginning. Just don't do it. Don't give me that kind of control. I'm going to mess this up. There's just no way. Oh, I like the art style. That's kind of cool. That's really, really interesting. The way that they've done the shading and like the body shapes and whatnot. That'll actually age really, really well as time goes along. So I'm sure that's what they were going for. But I like that. It's got kind of a Prince of, uh, Prince of Egypt type look to it. Body type. We can be swole, son. Be reading on that swole Bible. Or we can be like a little rail thin guy. Eh, we'll go with the address. See, the reason I wouldn't go with this guy is because I got to go with the little short guy because I'm a short guy. I got to represent. Short people, you got to represent for your own. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, short people represent. Fighting with them filthy talls. You know how it goes. All right, so in the Northern Empire where you were born, men enjoy equal protections of the laws of the Overlord. Wait, what happens if you play a female then? Oh, women get equal protection of the laws of the Overlord while following a standard. Many women pledge. Let's see here. In the southern lands of the Tears, women may crew a ship, but only men may own or captain a vessel. While these customs give oceans to men, the lands are trusted to women. Men may rent and lease, but only women may own land and bequeath it to their daughters and sisters. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So it's like men rule the sea, women rule the earth. Okay, that's an interesting setup. I'll probably just go with the dude then. I don't know. I've always fancied a pirate's life, I guess. I thought he had a rock and top knot. But he didn't. Cool. Cool. So now we got to do our face. What kind of face we want to have. Ooh, that guy right there looks serious. That guy looks super serious. He looks like he could be the potions master. I'm the potions master. I'm always upset with you for weird reasons. No one truly knows why I'm always upset. 
We'll go with that face right there. That seems all right. Hairstyle. Well, we got to do the hawk, bro. Oh, it doesn't go. See, they never make it go down the back. The hawk never goes down the back. The hawk has to go down the back because now I got to pick something else. That's too Hercules for me. I'm not feeling that one. Let's see what's going on in here. Do we have like a, a nice like Conan O'Brien pompadour in here anywhere? Like what we got going on? We don't have like a shaved head either. Usually I go with a shaved head. All right, well, we'll just be picturesque for right now. We'll have that hairstyle. Tell me I can get some chops. Where the chops at? Yeah, buddy, there it is. Now we got their chops. And see, now that I got the chops in play, now we got to do like a different face here. We got to figure out what's going on. You got to get the chops that fit. You know what? I'm going to be scruffy on this one. I'm going to be scruffy on that. People are like, ugh, he must be a rebel. He went to bed late and got up late too, even though he's got a job. Ugh. All right, so we'll go with that right there. We'll go. My, my hair is darker. I'll go with the darker hairstyle. Male aggressive. Ooh, we can have tats. Dude, let's get... Oh, yes. Let's get tatted up, son. Let's go. It's a little too disturbed for my taste. It's a little tribal for me, but... Oh, there it is right there. Get some of those little Rooney symbols and shit. Let people know what's up. What's up with this tree? Okay. I like tattoos. I got a lot of tattoos, so... You know, my character, he's got to have the tats. Let's go with that one right there. I get to pick the colors. I would just go for something like standard. Just go for like normal tattoo colors, just like black on black. Feeling it. I mean, we could put some gold around it if we really wanted to be fancy. Yeah, let's put some gold around it. God. My wounds are slowing me down. I need rest. Eh. Huh. To battle. With no regrets. Good work. You learn something every day. All right, we're gonna be noble. I've always fancied being noble. You guys know about my aspirations in life. I've talked about this in multiple series, so where's like a face that I feel... See, this is where I run into trouble. I can never pick a portrait. This is where I really get into trouble. Uh, what portrait makes me feel like me, you dig? I mean, I could just slap a helmet on his ass and that'll be that. Then you wouldn't have to worry about it. Oh, that guy's got a ninja mask. That dude ain't messing around. He ain't playing. Okay. I'm going to slap a helmet on him because we're going to be playing a, he a heavy armor class anyway, so I don't think it matters. There we go. And then how did you join Kairos' army? We can be a pit fighter. Okay. So we can fight in the ring. We can be a hunter. We can be a guild apprentice. A noble scion. Okay. I I'm leaving these on here for a little bit so you can pause it and you can look at it too if you want to. We can be a soldier. We can be a criminal. A lawbreaker. A war mage. If you have a combination of wits and courage, to be casters and warriors. This curse with the combination are barely pulled from their mundane lives. And assigned to the armies of the Archons. Okay. I, I kind of want to be a war mage. As I understand, there's not actually... I always play clerics when I play games like this, so... Let's go with... I mean, noble science sounds pretty baller, too. Yeah, let's be... A, we're going to be noble. We're going to be noble as all hell. Let's do that. Be noble as shit. All right, so do they have, like, spear and sh spear and shield are my favorite. So if there's no spear and shield, I got to fall back on some stuff. So we can go sword and board. We can go javelin, dual wielding, atrophy spells. What the hell is an atrophy spell? Drains your enemy's attributes. Frost spells. Unarmed attacks. We can just be a dude that throws, like, we can throw those hands. Man, we could put five across some, four across some. I guess unless you're hitting with your thumbs. I don't know. All right, we can go short bows, vigor spells. Let's go with my primary expertise. Well, let's go for something paladin-y then. So we'll go sword and board, and we got to choose an ability. We get shield slam, which dazes people for 20 seconds, or we can get sunder, which breaks their armor. Mm, let's go with shield slam, I guess. Sounds good to me. And then with our secondary expertise... Branch of magic that focuses on giving bonuses to yourself and your allies. Let's go with vigor spells, although we could be like a lightning. I wonder if there's penalties. I wonder if there's penalty. What? Spear and shield was on the second one? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Back up. Spear and shield is what's up. I'm all about that life, so we might need to do something a little different here. So let's say we go vigor spells. And then we go spear and shield. Oh, shnikes. There it is. Who doesn't love a good spear line? So I, I'm try I was looking to see if maybe I could move this and click it over, but it looks like actually secondaries and primaries are like different from one another. 
So if I go in on like spear, I'm probably making horrible mistakes right now. This game has no anything. Like it's brand new. Skills. So we get one-handed weapons, control vigor, magical staff, dodge, lore. Well, how does that line up? So let's say we go spear and or we go sword and shield then. We get one-handed weapons, parry, and athletics. We pick that, we go next, and how does that change vigor? Like do we still get the same thing? We still oh we only get plus two to control vigor. So you gotta choose which is essentially dominant over the two. Alright. I got you. Now after some perusal, it seems to me that you don't want to make hybrid characters. I was taking a look, and every single thing that you pick here gives you a reasonable amount of baseline stats, which we're going to apply later. It's kind of like Fallout, where you've got like percentage values of how good you are at something, and everything you take adds to that. So like, let's say I go Sword and Shield. That would give me one-handed. It would give me parried. It would give me athletics. That would give me bows, dodge, subterfuge. Shock spells would give me dodge and lore. We go with Javelin, that gives me Throne, Dodge, Parry, and Athletics. If we go Dual Wielding, that gives us Parry, Athletics. It seems to me as though you kind of want to stack these. It seems like a bad idea to go Hybrid. What I was trying to do is make like a Paladin type character. and Fiddling around with it, it gave me middling stats when I was messing with it. And so I'm thinking instead what we might do is my primary... If I go Javelin... That gives me thrown, but if I stack sword and shield, and then I go, so let's take shield slam from there, and then I go spear and shield. Spear and shield gives me additional, so I get plus eight to one-handed weapon, six, and then parry, but I think, you know, that looks all right. I want to use spears. That's the thing, is I want to be a spearman, like really, really badly. I never do anything like that, and I want to be a spearman. That allows us to take both the melee abilities which seems all right to me. We'll have to pick up somebody else to heal later on down the line or somebody else to, like, bolster us. But for now, I suppose our, our character will just be, like, that giant guy in hulking armor in the front. I was hoping to do, like, a paladin hybrid build, but with the way that the stat points work right here, I'm not sure if I can balance it out later in the game without any meta. I'm going to try and build for a character that's actually good versus a character that I don't know how he's going to turn out later on down the line. So we'll just go with something like that right there. I love spears. Being a fancy spearman sounds awesome to me. I've already got my colors picked right there. I've already got my banner picked, so that's good to go. And we got to put in our name. I've already got that. Let, you can tell I've been fiddling around with this for like ever. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do for the series. Stats are already in. We don't need wits anymore because I was playing around with magic. So instead, I would say let's go with some armor deflection or something. We can either make ourselves hit really, really hard. Or we can go and make it so that our armor deflects better and we're accurate. But that seems like a pretty good middle point right there. Like, I can live with that. I would take that down by one and say maybe give ourselves a little bit of... Like, if I drop that by two... How much bonus health do we get for each one of those? We get 10% bonus health and will defense. Okay. And then quickness makes it so our abilities cool down faster. Resolve is like our magical resist. Wits makes us smarter... Let's go with Vitality. I'm going to go off the grid a little bit and put some into Vitality because we are going to be in melee a lot, so it feels to me like having extra HP will probably help and maybe a little bit of magical defense or something would help. All right, so one-handed weapons. we got 20 points we need to allocate. Most of these things do exactly what they say on the tin, so don't concern yourself too much. I'm going to take this up to 40 for now. I'm going to take Athletics up to 40. It looks like we use that in Dialogue to physically overpower people or to intimidate. And then parry seems like it'll be probably important too, since, you know, the spear goes into the shield instead of into my guts. And since I don't want to have a pierced duodenum today, we'll leave that alone. We've also got to pick if we want to do conquest or if we want to do quick start. Conquest allows you to play the pre-storyline so that the rest of the game knows how to react to your character. So I'm going to do conquest. Let's go ahead. All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the tears. Our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos' reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the Conquerors. Until it's too late.
All right. During the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos invasion of the tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you will make affects your character and how major factions of the tears will respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. So you're one of the conquest. The Bastard City stood on the northern border between Kairos Empire and the Tears, built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms. The city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was a little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking the city would send a message to the rest of the Tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. Okay. So, infiltrate the tiers. Both armies sent their forces to prepare the way. And then we've got the Gates of Judgment. In the first major engagement of the war, Kairos armies cross the mountains and establish a foothold. Okay. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with the advanced units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? Well, obviously the Disfavored, because they have dope-ass armor. You lent your skills to the elite Disfavored scouts to capture a border garrison. Graven Ash insisted that an early victory in the offensive would boost the morale of his troops and diminish the haughty overconfidence of the Southerners. The Oathbound scouts identified a modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw the preparations and offered your opinions on strategy. When the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by the cheering of Disfavored scouts, you were the least surprised. Okay. An inside agent. You found an ally inside the city to prepare the way for the approaching armies, or we can contain the fire. Resident fire mages threaten the first leg of conquest. Kairos forces put a stop to their unchecked power. Yeah, let's go with an inside agent. With the border garrison captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos armies and lurked in the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that converting one of the locals to Cairo's side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. We can either a well-informed guard captain or a fast-talking smuggler. The guard captain seems more useful to me. You enlisted a bitter captain of the guard to sell military secrets to the disfavored. Better that Cairo's forces march to their next inevitable victory, well-informed. The captain of the guard was of a mind that the bastard city was corrupt and deserving of better leadership. You did nothing to convince him otherwise. After taking your promises of stature and security to Hardy, he offered you a list of valuable assets, from weakened stones in the rampart to the state of siege provisions, capping it off with a list of city officials whose loyalties could likely be turned to support your cause. Your tactics of infiltration have placed you in the bastard city ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city's defenses for the arrival of the forces of Kairos, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the city? Duel the city marshal incite a riot, spread fear through assassination. You know, we get an ability for this one, so we get Warrior's Respite. Stand your ground, and you take less damage, and you gain health. This one gives me Searing Palm, which is fire magic. This one gives me Concealing Shadows, which is stealth. So for building my character, I think this one's the best. You challenge the commander of the Bastard City's defenses to an honorable fight to the death. The disfavored wish to spare soldier lives for the battles ahead and civilian lives for the occupation. The city marshal was an old but experienced fighter, and his value up to the guard was an accepted truth. After making guarantees for your protection, you met him in the square of the market district and fought in the view of tense onlookers. The battle drew on longer than you thought possible. Good fortune struck when an ornamental chain hanging from the marshal's armor snagged the quillen of his sword, granting you the opportunity to end his life swiftly. Cairo's forces celebrated your return to camp and the dissolution of enemy morale. All agreed that the bastard city was poised to crumble. And crumble it did. The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Cairo's banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Two nonsense word that you were to join the next frontier of Cairo's conquest, either as a judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's Crossing or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. So what is Apex? Pots of Iron made the settlement a strategic war asset. Forge-bound smith mages of expectable skill to make the flow of weaponry. Okay. And then this one over here, the realm of Apex is idle in the safety of the valley, biding their time as their neighbors in the bastard tier fell. 
Joint forces of the disfavored Scarlet Chorus cross over the mountain to take control of the Tears Central Valley. Uh, let's do this one. The mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the Tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored Scarlet Chorus had pushed deep into the Tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunan assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos Law to the territory as well as keeping an eye on both armies. So we have the Battle of en Edring Pass, the Denial of Strength. The Battle of Edring Pass. The Disfavors sent their most destructive ally to crush Edring Fort. Cairn, Archon of Stone, buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. Scarlet Chorus promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The Chorus demanded compensation. So side with the Disfavored, side with the Scarlet Chorus. Um, they were promised it. I mean, you upheld the Scarlet Chorus crime and demanded the youngest Disfavored Scouts join the Chorus to settle the debt. In the aftermath of your ruling, the main force of both armies turned out to witness disfavored scouts conscripted into the Scarlet Chorus, a rarity of which few could recall any precedent. Archon Graven Ash, though vocal in his earlier opposition, held his dignity and shed only silent tears for his lost soldiers. The Chorus mob swarmed around the new recruits, hoisting them up and tearing at their disfavored raiments as they began hazing rituals that lasted throughout the night. Let's see, we can go with the Marriage Bed Armistice, a local custom of the Tears created strife between the armies, or we can go with Scarlet Chorus Soldier found wearing disfavored armor. So I guess we're rendering judgments right now. Scarlet Chorus Soldiers were seen wearing disfavored gear, supposedly taken from those who fell in battle. The disfavored were outraged, citing tradition that their armor passed only to the next of kin within the army. In a debate of tradition versus practicality, you had to rule in favor of one army over another. Um, I'm going to punish the Scarlet Chorus. It's not acceptable. You upheld the disfavored traditions and punished those wearing the Legion's iron. The army had come to deliver Kairos peace, which came with a higher standard. Scarlet Chorus recruits bearing Legion gear were identified, rounded up, and flogged in the disfavored camp. Graven Ash and his soldiers called it fair, if not wholly equivalent responses to the injustice done. By way of reply, tricksters in the Scarlet Chorus filled hundreds of requisition forms requesting arms and armor, a clerical burden that somehow fell to you to reject each in turn. After many spans of battle, the army of Apex finally agreed to peace talks. The queen herself agreed to attend a negotiation summit and invited a representative to Nan to discuss the possible terms. How did you negotiate the surrender? We can negotiate the surrender of the valley to Cairo's forces, putting an end to bloodshed, or we can taunt the queen of Apex into striking us under the banner of two truce and duel the queen and slew her. Let's go ahead and we'll use mediation. The former enemies were loath to part with their lands, but they were even more reluctant to continue a war they were losing at every turn. The Tearsmen are a stubborn lot. Despite their grim situation, it still took days of discussion and diplomacy to show them the madness of tenacity. On the third day of mediation, the rules of Apex finally submit to your terms of surrender, putting an end to the war in the valley and freeing up Kairos' forces to march deeper into the tear. Another one bites the dust, and we become more powerful. So now we've got another option. The land of Apex is finally rested in the hand- By the way, I'm gonna cut this a little longer because we gotta see some gameplay first, you know what I mean? The land of Apex is rested in the hands of Kairos forces. The Scarlet Chorus paused to revel in victory while the Disfavor prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos military left the choice of your next destination yours to make. Uh, there's Stalwart, which is an easily defended position with a rich military tradition. Okay. There's Azure, dispatch the Archon of Stone to subjugate the nation of Azure. Or these the Vellum Citadel. Kairos conquering gaze fell upon the Vellum Citadel. It's treasures, its knowledge, and its secrets. Well, we're going to the Citadel then to get some secrets and treasure and knowledge. I'm a pirate at heart. Yar. I really like this sequence. This sequence is very, very well done. It gets you into the mood to play an RPG. You're like, so I'm no longer a nameless person that's been doing all these things. It's actually hashing out how I've lived my life before we even start our character, and I like that. The Vellum Citadel was an archive and library of massive scale. Its inhabitants were known as the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that centuries ago carved out their own mountain as refuge on land settled or unsettled by the other major realms. 
Legend said that the Citadel housed a treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The Overlord spies infiltrated the school and confirmed as much. The time was ripe to send a detachment to the Great Library Fortress and force the scholars to yield to Kairos. Ah, a bunch of librarian nerds. We got this. I'll just spear them good. You can't fight with a book. Peaceful surrender turned bloody. Or Siren Song ensnared some stealthy... Well, that one's got too much alliteration. It turned me off. We gotta go over here. A detachment of Kairos army marched on the Vellum Citadel expecting an orderly surrender. As they neared the main gates, a blast of arcane energy struck the commander dead. Suddenly, the highest ranking officer alive, Kairos forces looked to you for the next steps. The call weighed on your mind as it had an immediate influence on soldier losses. So we can order the expendable Scarlet Chorus to attack, commanding the disorderly mob forward to give the elite disfavored a chance to withdraw. Though a costly maneuver in terms of lives lost, it assured the survival of the most capable and effective soldiers. Or we can order the disfavored to advance their shield wall, knowing that a handful of Kairos elite soldiers could hold off the attack until the chorus retreated. You knew the disfavored would despise you for any loss that the Scarlet Chorus expense, and that was a small price to pay for saving lives. Oh, well, I gotta stick with the homies then. Forever itching for a fight, the howling mob still recognized your maneuver, the sacrificial move that it was. Those from the Scarlet Chorus who ran headlong into battle made promises of a reckoning upon their return. Thankfully for you, hardly any of them limped back in one piece. Those few who survived made fevered whisperings of their grievances, naming you as a villain to the Scarlet Chorus. <laughs> oh no. I'm a villain now. I'm a villain. So we can go to the Plunder of Parchment. Contraband Parchment turns violent. Or we can intercept in in intelligence resulted in a lost disfavored patrol. Let's do this. We gotta help the homies out. The disfavored learned of a hidden enemy enclave and sent scouts to locate it. They never returned from their mission. The remaining disfavored soldiers demanded that you send the Scarlet Chorus to retrieve their scouts. But the Scarlet Chorus flatly refused to fall into the same trap. They recommended the scouts be treated as wartime casualties. Um. So we can send the Scarlet Chorus to find our patrol. I don't think they're going to like that very much. Or we can do our own scouts. Let's do our own homies. The siege went on without the bulk of the disfavored detachment. A troubling absence left you wondering in spite of your order. Days after you made the ruling, a resounding clang echoed across the expanse between the Vellum Citadel and your camp. A team of scouts sent to investigate recovered a crude iron sculpture shaped in a mockery of graven ash. The materials, the bloodstained armor of your lost soldiers torn and reshaped with enemy magic. Food morale dwindled as the siege party realized the enemy would win this war of attrition. Two non sent word that Cairo's patience had run thin. The overlord would cast an edict to fire on the enemy. Exterminatus! The parchment arrived in a slender case of engraved iron, written on it the words of a spell powerful enough to destroy the citadel. You had the choice of when to read it. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the devastation to come. You could also wait till sunset, giving them ample time to flee or make amends. Um, I don't believe in killing civilians. So I'm going to go ahead and let's warn the mages of the Overlord's Edict. Let's save the civilians if we can. I know war is war, but I don't want to kill innocent people. So we'll claim that we have spies in the Citadel, and we warn the mages. Granting their request, you met with the enemy under a blue flag of peace and warned them of their doom, giving the core of spies and the enemy a chance to run. I confronted them with a warning and hoped the message received. The hour before sunset, numerous figures were spotted fleeing the Citadel. As the sun dipped over the horizon, you read over the words of the Edict. The earth shook and the red-orange light glowed in the foundation of the sprawling citadel bubbling up from under the library. A torrent of lava heaved with explosive force, gushing from windows and between loose bricks, melting winding trenches in the surrounding land. Days later, the flames still raged on, the conflagration continually fed and renewed by the power of the edict. Goodbye, citadel. Man, we are doing a number on this country right now. The armies of Kairos left the devastation of the Vellum Citadel in silence. From that day forward, the tears came to know the once noble citadel as the Burning Library. This was an undisputed loss of resources, knowledge, culture, and life, but a message had been sent. The Overlord will not tolerate defiance. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. You were one of the last to depart from the mountains, and as you journeyed off, you spotted a few campfires there. They were mere specks, dwarfed by the Inferno, the last gasp of survivors or perhaps looters from Kairos' armies bored and daring enough to pick through the ashes. Conquest complete. That's the end. Do you want to replay or... Let's go ahead and continue. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord 
the Disfavored, and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished, not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. Well, I can't accept that. This dude needs a better helmet. By all means, bro, you gotta get that craftsmanship up. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. By the Imperium's will. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Ew, that seems unsanitary. A blood fountain. Fatebinder Leomond, I presume we've been expecting you. All right. Right. Oh, that looks good. I like it. Kairos the Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side. The disfavored warrior claps her gauntlet to her breastplate, the traditional salute of her legion. When I heard to expect a Fatebinder, I had a bad feeling Tunan would send you. The disfavored warrior clears her throat, forcing a smile to her face. If the Archon of Justice sends a Fatebinder who favors the ways of the Scarlet Chorus over the sanctity of the Legion, perhaps that's a sign of who's to be chosen to rule these worthless tearsmen. But on a personal note, it is good to see another Harbinger. By Kairos' will, most of our old invasion force still lives, but most of us have been scattered across the tiers, reassigned as needs change. I miss those days, when there was so much battle ahead of us and so much glory still to be won. But I know the Archons are expecting you. Don't let me wax nostalgically about the old days. I can do a lore check, or I'm gonna do a lore check. Can you hear that hum in the air? That glow around the rocks, the avalanche is Kairos magic, the overlord. He sealed the valley. Your senses see more than mine, good fate binder. I do not pretend to know much about such things, but if that was Kairos magic and you're here on important business, well, you don't have to be the Archon of Secrets to guess that you're here to proclaim an edict. What does Kairos have in store for the enemy? Ten years of festering plague? An edict of twisted bones? I come bearing the edict of Kairos. Our soldiers will complete their task or they will die. The edict is leveled against us? Her eyes widen with fear, her posture slackens. But the Scarlet Chorus prevents us from taking action. Why would the Overlord punish both of- She clears her throat with a sigh. You will forgive me, it is not my place to question. We should have conquered the enemy within weeks of arriving in the valley. The delay reflects poorly upon all of us. Subterfuge. Your instinct is to blame the Scarlet Chorus, okay. If we follow Kairos and stop the insurrection, no harm will come to any of us. If following orders and killing the locals will save our lives, you don't have to tell me twice. I sure hope you don't have to tell the Archons twice either. She looks at you with a nervous smile. Still, this is coming from the fire starter. The fate binder that made the fire bubble up from the soil and reduced the Vellum Citadel to ash, so... You'll forgive me if I'm still terrified all the same. But you've traveled a long way and I won't keep you any further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you. Her voice falls silent, her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? Oh, more runners. Third time this week. The Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from the outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path through which you arrived. But they're a bit late for that now. Come on. Let's show the Oathbreakers a good fight. Let's do it indeed. Let's go stab these fools. Stab them up for the glory of Kairos. Where is my spear? Bring my spear out. 
Let's see, what do we have going on right now? So I've got my sword and board. How do I get my, my weapon sets? Here we go, get the spear out. There we go, break that thing out and let's do this thing. We got this covered. I'm gonna spear the hell out of this dude. There it is, yep, stick him. I'm gonna get you with me, sticker. Oh, I've got you now, my friend. So it looks like I attack kind of slowly. I was a little worried about this, but his attacks go kind of slowly too. So maybe they just lowered the amount of. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack this guy. Hold on, we got going. Sunder, I will sunder you, beast. You will know the truth of Kairos' will. Away with you, hound! I'm gonna shield slam this dude too. Here we go, shield slam. Oh no, I missed. Fifty-four percent. Okay, that's not good. We don't want to miss. I've got thrust. Well, here, time for me to thrust on another man. What does she have going on? Is she even in my party? I don't think she's in my party. Stand aside, Oathbreaker. You are no match for the might of Kairos. You and your ilk will be expunged. That's one down. Let's check further along the path for more. And we'll be doing that in the next episode. This is Tyranny, a new CRPG from Paradox. I will see you all in future episodes. Thank you for stopping on in. I hope you had fun so far. I think this is going to be a fun little mini-series. See you all next time. Bye, everybody.